What's up everyone, today I want to talk about one of the best leveling builds for Sorcerer in Season 5, and it is a Chain Lightning Sorcerer build. This is the fastest and one of the most fun leveling experiences I've ever had on Sorcerer, and I've played this every single season. This build is so powerful, you can take out everything on the screen with one Chain Lightning. You can easily take on monsters 20 to 30 levels above you while leveling, giving you ridiculous amounts of XP. On top of that, Sorcerer received a ton of buffs coming into this season, making it one of the most powerful classes, finally. <laughs> but it also received specific buffs to its Chain Lightning. We got the big buffs to the skill itself, making it deal more damage. We got the new affix that zaps nearby enemies. And we got the new unique Axial Conduit that makes Chain Lightning circle around you and seek out enemies making the build not only an amazing leveling build, but potentially one of the better endgame builds. So how does it work and what's the playstyle? Here it is around level 70, taking on level 90 mobs, and you can see everything on the screen just gets annihilated before sometimes you even see the mob. We also have the recharging aspect, which means that we get mana every time Chain Lightning bounces, helping us put out more of these. We've got the unstable current ultimate to pop off this huge electric damage in all directions, and we use ice blades to bring back cooldowns as fast as possible. On top of this, Chain Lightning is one of the rewards for completing your seasonal journey. So as you go through the season, you'll get more and more aspects that help you make a Chain Lightning build, meaning you're not as reliant on heavy RNG to get going. There's also a good chance to get the new Unique for this as a reward from this seasonal journey, but the Unique isn't required. It just becomes more fun and a bit more faster once you get it. So let's get into this, starting with the skill tree. Okay, so skill tree from the top. First up, we go five points into Art Clash. The reason we do that is because it's a leveling build and we are going to run out of mana. We don't have an optimized set of gear. We don't have all of the aspects from the start. So we're going to run into mana problems because Chain Lightning is mana hungry. And, you know, by the end, by like World Tier 4, you're, you're fine. But early on, you're going to run out of mana. So five points in Arc Clash, one point in Enhanced, and then one point in Flickering. Arc Clash grants five mana if you hit at least one enemy. So this is really good early on for just getting your mana back, hitting a Chain Lightning, getting your mana back, hitting a Chain Lightning. Really good. And you're going to clear things really fast with that. As we move down, we go into Chain Lightning, 5 out of 5 again. This is your big damage. You want to take Enhanced, grants 3% increased crit strike per bounce, and then each time Chain Lightning bounces, it deals increased damage up to 30%. You want to put 1 point into Devastation, so that we can go 3 into here. Your core skills deal 12% increased damage when cast above 50 mana. So the, again, you build up with your basic, you hit a Chain Lightning, and you can see here Chain Lightning costs 31 mana, so you quickly burn through. And if you've got the Unique, you burn through even faster because it uses more mana with the bouncing. So down to defensives, we want to take teleport. I don't think I've ever made a sorcerer build that doesn't have teleport. It's just incredible in almost every single area. <laughs> it's your movement, it's your utility, it's your get out of trouble. You can go here for movement speed and then you can go here shimmering to gain damage reduction. So it's also good for just dodging big attacks. And if you do still mess it up, you can get damage reduction. Ice armor so that we can get to this. While ice armor is active, your mana regen is increased by 30%. Three points in glass cannon. This has been buffed, so this is even better than before. 30% increased damage, but you take 10% more. Absolutely incredible passive. Down to here, we want to take this big cluster of defensives. Align the elements. One, so we can go three points into mana shield, three points into protection. It's just a big old defensive. It's, it's one of the, the best seven points to quit in just for massive defensives on Sorcerer. Then we want to take Ice Blades. If you've never used Ice Blades before, there's kind of a trick here for cooldowns. So you put one point into Ice Blades and that summons and you summon an Ice Blade. Here you get their cooldown is reduced by 0.5 seconds each time it hits a vulnerable enemy. So the Ice Blades are summoned, they make an enemy vulnerable, and then their cooldown is reduced as they attack that vulnerable enemy, which is cool. But then as we get to here, 20% of Enhanced Ice Blades cooldown reduction is applied to other skills, which means that as the Ice Blades are doing their thing, they're also reducing the cooldowns on your, your shield, your teleport, your ultimate. So it's a really good thing to put in a build, especially a leveling build like this. And and once once you get to like single targets, Chain Lightning does start dropping off a little. It's a big AOE spell. So when you get onto single targets, it's nice having something like this to funnel more single target stuff. Then we go down to here. We don't really take any of these. We could take the electric spells here, one into Dike Discharge, so we can go three into Shocking Impact. Each time you stun an enemy, you deal damage to them. Really good, good amount of damage as well. Then we move down to here. We take the, the Lightning Ultimate, Unstable Currents. At 10 seconds, whenever you cast a shock skill, a random core conjuration or mastery skill is also cast. This is huge because this is a pretty much a pure lightning build. So this is incredible because we're going to be casting a lot of those. Unstable currents increases your attack speed, which is great. And then while currents is active, you pulse energy faster, which is which is fine. We do have a few things that work on that. Uh, you could take that one off if you want, but I think it's good to have them all. This is good here. 25% increased attack speed because while we're whacking away with our basic attack, with our... Um, Art Clash, 
Not only is this five out of five, so it's doing good damage, it's also rocking all of this because this is a there's a shock spell. You can see the shock tag. That means that as we're just whacking away at 25% increased damage, we're actually setting out all of these other big attacks, all of these big chain lightnings, uh, lightnings, all of these different things are coming out when we do unstable currents and we get an unstable currents back off cooldown faster with ice blades. Finally, we go into Veer's Mastery. This was buffed and changed completely in Season 5, and it's it's fantastic. When you crit strike an enemy with a shock skill, you become charged and take less damage. Incredible. While charged, crit strikes have 10% chance to cause the damage to arc as lightning to another enemy. If there's no other targets, you hit them for 250% of the damage. It's just incredible. It's just incredible. It makes a, a crit heavy lightning build feel so, so, so fun. So there's also a good aspect that works well with this. But yeah, overall, this is the build. It's it's very, 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 very fun to level. I'm 70 and I'm still running it pretty much exactly the same as this. I'm going to have another one for end game, maybe like 90 to 100 plus. That's going to have a, a burning aspect to it because once you get into the Paragon board, there's a lot you can do with burning. But just for leveling, this is going to take you a long way. Okay, now let's talk about enchantments. Number one. Chain lightning. Now, every time you spend 100 mana, you form a chain lightning for free. And chain lightning costs like what, 30 mana? 31 mana. So getting a free one is, is huge. That's our main damage dealer in this build. So that's a really, really good one. The second one is it's a bit more preference. I really like ice blades. The way this works is every 40 seconds in cooldowns you spend, you summon an ice blade on a random enemy. And if you look at our abilities, 20 second cooldown, 14 second cooldown, 14 second cooldown, 70 second cooldown. So as we're using these big high cooldown abilities, we're summoning ice blades. Those ice blades, what do they do? They reduce the cooldowns of our other abilities. So the more we have out, the faster our cooldowns are coming back. When they come back, we're summoning more ice blades. So kind of like snowballs really, really, really fast. So it's really good. It works really well on like bosses, single targets, things with big health. They're there for a while. So I really, really like this in a leveling build, especially a lightning build, which is more AOE heavy. Having something that's good in single target complements it really well. You could also go down the fire route, especially at high level. Once you get to like 70 plus and you start going on through the Paragon boards, you're going to start using like, you're going to see the fire boards. And there's a lot of stuff on them that are like, when an enemy is burning, deal more damage. Gain this if an enemy is burning. Get damage reduction from burning enemies. So it's good to try and make the enemies burn. A couple of ways to do that is to put one point into fireball and take the fireball enchantment. Direct damage from skills applies burning. You can do the Hydra. After spending 200 mana, you summon a Hydra. That will burn stuff. So there's, there's a good way to do that. And I'm going to work on it on an end game build that's really good for pushing the pit that will probably have some sort of fire enhancement. But while leveling, I think this is fine. But that, that's how I've done it. Let me know down below. It's only day one of the season. You know, if, if you found some some really cool way of doing this, let me know. Okay, now let's go over the aspects. I'm going to be doing that on the on the Mobilitics build, which I'll link down below. It's got the, the skills, the tree, the Paragon ball, the aspects, the gear stats, all that stuff on it, the tempering. So it's all down below. But let's go over the aspects first. And the, the best thing about this season is as part of season five, the seasonal journey awards different aspects each each season. And for season five, for Sorcerer, one thing that they, they said they're going to give a lot of is chain lightning aspects. So a lot of these you're going to get just from going through the story, going through the seasonal aspects and opening all of the little boxes. So as you do that, you're going to get lots of these. Uh, you might even get the unique. So let's go over them. Okay, so I'll go through some of the main ones first and then some of the things that are just nice to have. So on the amulet, Recharging. Each time Chain Lightning bounces, you gain one to three mana. This is crucial. Without this, you'll never have mana. You'll cast like two lightnings and you'll just be out of mana. This is the number one thing to get. The second you 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 know you, you want to start running this build, if you don't have it, go to the, the Zenith dungeon in Fractured Peaks and get this. You can just go and target it, go and get it straight away. It's the number one thing you need. Then I go for Prodigy, using a cooldown reduces mana, that's pretty nice. And then Stable, while Unstable Currents is not active, your Shock Skills have a chance to trigger a free cast. It's just free damage. Then you want to get Unbroken Tether. Chain Lightning has a chance to chain five additional times, which is really nice. And Shredding Blades. Ice Blades' chance to apply Vulnerable is increased by 20%, and the duration is increased by four seconds, and you gain Vuln damage. But the amount of value here is crazy. Really, really good one to have. Okay, then you get Lightning Rod. This is another damage one. Chain Lightning's got 25% chance to deal up to 80% increased damage, doubled against bosses or crowd-controlled enemies, and prefers them as targets, which basically means it's got a chance to just go and just hit a really high priority target for a ton more damage. After that, it's just some defensives. Disobedience on the Helmet for increased armor. Mage Lord's Aspect, which uh, gives you damage reduction tripled against close enemies, which is huge. It works really well because we also do take the Veer's Mastery Key passive. On the pants, we take aspects of might, basic skills, grant damage reduction. But I would say the second you can get the unique, the new unique axial conduit, the second you can get that, 
put that on the pants. This is just a temporary thing. As soon as you get Axial Conduit, like once you're leveling, hopefully you'll get it well, from a drop or you'll get it from the seasonal journey. But once you get to a high enough level, go and farm this. This is like the number one thing that makes this build a lot stronger, a lot more fun. So try and go and get that on the pants, the Axial Conduit. And then finally, I went for Audacity. When there are at least five close enemies, stun them for additional damage. Can only occur once every 20 seconds. It's a small thing. You can just go for movement speed on there if you want. If you want to use a movement speed one, like a mobility aspect. But I like this. A bit of shock gives us more, um, you know, we have a lot that works with stun and shocked enemies. So this works really well. But that's the aspects. Okay, now let's go over the gear stats and the tempering. So while you're leveling, don't stress. Don't stress about your gear much at all. In World Tier 2, 1, 2, 3, I wouldn't really stress about it. The one thing you can put on is weapon tempers. So you can use these weapon things here. Answer chain lightning projectiles to cast twice. That's good to have on your weapons. Other than that, just go for the highest eye level gear piece and don't really, don't really worry about it. Once you get into world tier four though, there's a new thing. In season five, we now get much higher experience the higher level monster we, we fight. And I believe it's up to 30 levels above us. So once you get into world tier four, if you can fight things that are, say you're 60 and you can fight things that are like 90, you get a massive experience boost. So it's really beneficial now to really work on your gear straight away obviously eye level is still super important on especially the left side where armors is concerned but go in for the right gear and bring it master working it that kind of thing is really really important now and here's what i'll be looking for intelligence that's a huge one now with the changes made in season five we get a lot more value per point of intelligence now so it's now really beneficial to get intelligence and to master work it so try and find things with intelligence on Try and find on the gloves, ranks the core skills because that is our chain lightning. More damage on chain lightning is more damage. And then we've got ranks to arc clash on the legs, but I'd personally just be trying to find the unique legs. Um, movement speed on the boots is great for leveling because we're just clearing through dungeons super fast anyway. Try and find resource cost reduction and cooldown reduction where you can. And the only other thing is crit. Crit scales so well with this build because of how it works with stunned enemies and how it works in our skill tree so try and get everything we can that has crit chance and crit damage you can see in here we've also got tempers that give increased crit strike to shock skills uh, increased crit damage you've got lucky hit chance to stun for two seconds things like that are really good but yeah that's what i'll be going for there's unstable currents the cooldown reduction which is really good as well but they're the main things i'll be going for they're the main things that I'd be, I'd be looking for on your gear. It's all here if you want to follow it kind of to the, you know, in more detail. But yeah, they're the main things I'd be, I'd be aiming for. Okay, let's talk about the Paragon board. And don't take the Paragon boards too serious while leveling. The Paragon board is, is giving you everything you need to get to max level. That's it. You're not pushing 150 in the pit in a leveling build, right? So you want to play this until you've reached like level 90, 100, and you're ready to move over to an end game build and you want to push end game content. And that's what this board will do. It will give you everything you need to get enough damage and enough damage resistance to push really high, you know, level 100 plus mobs while you're leveling, get huge XP and start opening the pit and all that stuff. So let's go over it. First up, first board, take a lot of the stuff here. Go down both lines because we get damage to all, uh, resist damage resistance to all elements and we get non-physical damage in both sides. So take all of that and then destruction here is good because it gives us that crit. It gives us crit strike and crit chance early. First board, we go static surge. The reason this is so good it's because of the uh, the legendary. After spending 100 mana, your next uh, chain lightning makes enemies vulnerable and restores 10% of your mana. Absolutely huge. And then in here we go unleash. 150% to our magic nodes and after spending 50 mana, you deal increased damage and get mana regen. And the magic nodes here are damage to stunned enemies, which is perfect because we have lots of things here that stuns enemies. So we get all of the different stunned enemies things here. As we go along the sides as well, we've got damage to stunned enemies, max mana, damage to stunned enemies, damage to stunned enemies, damage to elites. All really, 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 really good stuff in an electric build. And then you want to go out by the, both sides. So out on the right, you can get Enchantment Master and Elementalist. This gives you um, increased non-physical damage and damage resistance in the different nodes, like uh, non-physical damage here. And then we've got resistance to all elements. On the left, I went with the, the Chondroglyph, mainly because of the, the thing at the bottom. Not so much the damage, but Conjuration skills have increased duration. And the way we use Ice Blades, it's a snowball. The more ice blades we have, the faster we can spawn more. That's really good in here. And then up into this one, I went with the elemental summoner board so we can drop in control, which is increased damage. And you see here, 10% increased damage to slowed or chilled or instead 20% to stunned or frozen. And we stun. So that's where I went. I would say once you once you start pushing hardcore end game, you want to start using the fire boards. So you've got burning instinct board. I've set it up, but I haven't used it. Once you start going on the end game, you kind of 
really, especially in the old seasons and on the PTR at least, and probably in season five, you're going to want to take advantage of fire damage. And you can use like really small changes, like you can put one enchantment in and everything can be burning. Just put one thing, like summon a Hydra or one skill change, summon a Hydra, and you can make things burn. Once you do that, you get all of the bonuses from damage reduction from burning enemies, increased damage to burning enemies. There's glyphs that do that as well. So we want to take advantage of all that when we're doing our end game builds. But while leveling, I just wouldn't worry about it. I just kind of like leave it like this, put a few points in. You can start moving into the damage, put the fireboards if you want. But yeah, this will easily get you into the 90s to 100. I'm going to do this all the way to 100. And then I'm going to release a end game lightning build, which, you know, subscribe if you want to see that. But this will easily get you to 100. But that's the, that's it. That's the Paragon board. That's the build. That's everything. Let me know what you think down below. We're very early in the season, but this is, this is dominating so far. It feels incredible. I, I'm enjoying it so much. If you, if you like the look of the build, let me know down below. If there's anything you change, let me know down below. And if you want to see more, subscribe to the channel. But that's it from me. This is this whole, uh, this whole build is linked. Everything's here is linked down below. But that's it. Take care and I'll catch you in the next one.